Hi, welcome to One Cool Thing from PCMag.com. I'm Sasha Segan. This is Rose Fox, and we have a lot of tablets, Rose. We have so many tablets here today, so many Amazon Fire tablets. Where should I even start? Well, I think you should start with the base model because that's what all of the rest of them are based on, correct? Yes. And okay, so on Amazon's website right now, if you're getting one of these new Fire HD 10 tablets, they have something like 46 or 47 different configurations you can pick. But almost all of them are at heart this tablet, which is a uh, new low cost. The base model is $149. Um, it is a 10 inch 1080p tablet uh, with uh, dual band Wi-Fi, two megapixel camera on the front, five megapixel camera on the back, a uh, relatively decent MediaTek Helio P60T processor for $149. And of course, Amazon's extremely simplified interface where um, it is very much about the content which you have bought from Amazon or want to view on Amazon or which Amazon wants you to buy and not really about other stuff. So give me a little bit of a rundown of what those hardware specs mean and what the difference is between these tablets and Amazon tablets that have come before. Yes, yeah, so, um, so the Fire HD 10 line has existed for several years now. But uh, what's important now is that they've significantly stepped up both the processor and the memory. Uh, the processor is significantly faster than the last generation, and it now comes with three gigs of RAM standard. And uh, previous Amazon tablets, and some of the Amazon tablets are still on the market, such as the Fire 7, have real sluggishness problems, even rendering their own user interface. And that's gone now. Um, I wouldn't run, you know, recent high test games on this thing, but for a $149 tablet, this is about the best performance you're going to get right now. And what makes the difference between this and some of the other models that you've got there? Yeah, so let's walk through uh, some of these other models that I've got here. Okay, so this is, this is your base model, your $149 Amazon tablet. Um, next here, I've got the Amazon uh, Fire HD 10 Kids Pro. And the Kids Pro is supposedly designed for children ages six to 12. It is a base Fire HD 10 in this, what they call a slimline case with a kickstand so that it can stand around and uh, you know show videos on a table. Um, it also comes with a two year warranty um, as opposed to uh, the standard 90 day or one year warranties you get with the other models. So if a kid messes it up, you can get a replacement uh, more easily. And then it also comes with a year's worth of Amazon's unlimited content library for kids. And you can see um, some of this content library uh, here, on, uh, here on the home screen. There's a lot of really high-end branded content, a lot of Disney, a lot of Lego, a lot of DC Comics. Um, it's stuff that a lot of kids like. Um, if you are more of an anti-capitalist parent, you will probably want to set up your own content library. Uh, but it's great to have these thousands of uh, items that uh, kids will want so that you don't have to keep on buying stuff. Now, along with the Kids Pro, we have here, this is the little kids version of the tablet. And this is a chunkier case. It's a big rubber bumper foamy case that can really like take a pounding. And the tablet isn't waterproof, um, but at least it can like, this thing will literally bounce if it's dropped. But what's funny about this one and about the Kids Pro for that matter, is that inside it's the same tablet running the same software. You could get an Amazon Kids Plus subscription for the base tablet and set up kids profiles on that base tablet and have the exact same functionality that you have here. Just this one comes with a case and a two-year warranty. So what they're really selling here as different models of the tablet are really accessories packages. Gotcha. There's, there is an exception though. There is one model which is actually different. And I've got this one here. I'm going to snap it out of its case first. This is the uh, Fire HD 10 Plus. And the Fire HD 10 Plus has an additional gig of RAM and wireless charging. 
And now why that matters and what that will change is that uh, there's a really nice anchor wireless charging dock you can get with it. Mm. And in that case, I'm popping this into echo show mode, something that all of the tablets can do. You essentially have an echo show that can sit around on a kitchen counter or a table somewhere, but that you can just seamlessly pick up out of the dock fully charged when you want a tablet. That's very shiny. Yeah, that's a really compelling use. Like, because it isn't plugged in, because it's wireless, like that gets rid of a little bit of the friction in terms of plugging it in and unplugging it. And if it's sitting most of the time on the counter as an Echo Show, it's just always there for you. And the speakers aren't nearly as good as a uh, dedicated Echo Show, but of course, dedicated Echo Shows can't be like picked up and, uh, and turned into a tablet. But that's not the case that you had that in. So I was wondering if you could show me that case as well, because that looked intriguing. Yes, there's one more model that Amazon uh, sells as a distinct model. And that is, hang on, I'm setting it up over here. Um, that is the productivity model. Uh -huh. And the productivity model comes with a year's worth of Microsoft Office Personal and this keyboard case. And this is a $49 Bluetooth keyboard case. It is protective. It does clamshell closed. Um, it is a relatively generic $49 keyboard case, but it's not bad. Like there, there are better keyboards in the world, but it's not bad. There's no trackpad, which I find kind of like I, I would want a trackpad, but, but it's not bad. And the whole thing is $219 for a little laptop. The only problem there is that Amazon's app store is missing so many of the apps that you generally need or that you use in a day's work that like it's fine if you're sticking to the web browser into microsoft office but as soon as you need to use like google docs or slack you're doing it all through the web browser and that's just if, if we're comparing this to the experience of a chromebook or a cheap laptop or an ipad as opposed to just saying oh it's 219 dollars it's just not as good as an experience Tell me a little bit more about that App Store problem, because that's a concern that you raised in a couple of your reviews. Yeah, this is something that I've been saying about the Amazon tablets for a couple of years now. Um, Amazon really wanted to be an alternative to Google. Uh, the tablets run Android, but it is a de-Googled Android, which Amazon calls Fire OS, where they've replaced all of Google services with their own services to get out of Google's orbit. And this isn't like one of those privacy focused OSs because obviously instead of all of your data going to Google, now all of your data goes to Amazon, which is not necessarily better. Um, it's more of a power play, but uh, because it doesn't have the Google Play app store and uh, app developers have to submit to the Amazon app store versions that have all of the Google hooks removed, just so many of the apps you expect, I mean, off the top of my head, obviously none of the Google apps, Slack, Signal, uh, a whole bunch of travel apps that I use, um, none of them are in this app store. And you can sideload apps, you can download apps from like APK Mirror websites. There are various kludgy ways to hack the Google Play Store onto the tablet, but like ultimately, um, just ultimately, I just feel like that's more awkward than the many, many other options you have out there. And these aren't really tablets that are designed for power users and the kind of people who want to go and do kludgy hacks to get the Play Store onto their tablets. They just want something that's going to work. Right. And there's, there's basically two big, in my mind, two big audiences for these tablets. And one of them is parents with kids who really like the really strong parental controls that Amazon has, really terrific granular parental controls. They like the subscription kids content library. Um, they just want their kids to have a tablet on which they know everything is kid safe and which they can monitor it all the time. And it's great for them. And then for other people, 
like if you just have a tablet where you want to look at you, you want to watch some streaming videos from popular services that aren't YouTube and, you know, do some light web browsing for $149. It's great, but it's not really competing with an iPad. Do you think people are going to be confused by all of these different options and bundles and accessories and configurations? I really do. I mean, I think that Amazon makes it purposefully unclear on their website that this is just the same tablet in a whole bunch of different cases. Um, I'm not quite sure why, like maybe they want people to feel they have a broader product line, but if there's one message I want to get across to our viewers, it's that it is pretty much the same tablet in a whole bunch of cases. And as a $150 tablet, how does it stack up against others in that price class? I mean, there aren't a lot of good $150 tablets out there, are there? I mean, there's the, there's, the what comes immediately to mind so most of the ones in this price range are eight inch and this is already 10 inch so this is already better there's some really basic lenovo tablets there's the on tablet from walmart um they are often slower or have lower resolution screens than this one does on the other hand those tablets have the google play store so they have a lot more apps so i mean that's the trade-off um it's always the trade-off with amazon tablets that you get somewhat better hardware than you would expect for the price with the price of being locked into Amazon software and services ecosystem. And let's talk about that 10 inch screen for a minute. How does it look? Um, you mentioned that it's higher resolution than a lot of the other tablets out there. And now you can look at things like comics or picture books. How does that work on this tablet? Yeah, it's a 1920 by 1200 screen. So um, it is definitely good enough for full pages of comics, very clear. Um, it's great for picture books um, in, in ways that the eight inch, the Amazon HD eight is just a little too small and a little too low res for and 720p screens feel fuzzy for. So if you're looking for something to read um, color content on, uh, you know, it's not the brightest screen in the world. It's a $150 tablet, but it's definitely a step up from non 1080p screens. So other than that, this is one tablet with a whole lot of different hats on. Is there yep. anything else that you need our viewers to know? Um, do they all come in that fetching shade of pink? <laughs> is there any, any other secrets that you want to reveal to make sure that people know exactly what they're getting into when they're looking at these tablets? So each of the submodels has a different set of colors. So, uh, for instance, the uh, the plus model, the one with the additional uh, the additional RAM and the wireless charging, only comes in that very sober gray that I showed you. Uh, but uh, we have full reviews of several of these different permutations on our website, pcmag.com, and uh, we definitely think that as long as you're willing to accept its limits. Uh, this tablet's a great buy for $150. That's fantastic. Thanks so much, Sasha. Thanks a lot. And this has been One Cool Thing with PCMag.com.